looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. How about that? Let's make a little bit of an announcement on our Discord server and officially start the stream. So let's go. Uh, let's go everyone. So uh, this is going to be a red circle, right? Live on Twitch, live on Twitch. And uh, what are we doing today on Twitch? We are uh, removing unused code automatically, right? So that's what we're doing today. Uh, HTTPS twitch.tv uh, slash toting and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. Did I type everything correctly? I think I in fact did, right? So hopefully this link is correct. Um, all right, so what it's all about, what it's all about. The dead code elimination is um, a very famous optimization of the uh, of the compilers. So let's actually Google it up. Dead code uh, elimination. So the idea of this optimization is that it removes the code which does not affect the program result. Right, so essentially it removes everything that is not used by the program at all. Uh, so there is a Wikipedia page, maybe I'm going to give the link to the Wikipedia page. So it's sh usually shortened to DCE. So maybe this is how we're going to be referring to that uh, from now on. Um, right, so yeah. And um, we are going to implement DCE for our programming language that been, we've been developing for several months already. It's called Porth, uh, right? And uh, let me actually go uh, and give the link in here. So this is basically uh, dead code elimination, right? And uh, why do I want to implement this thing right now? So uh, like I do have a goal for my language to be optimized at some point, right? But not right now because I haven't finished the design of the language yet. And I think trying to optimize a language that is not finished, it's kind of a dumb idea. But anyway, so um, yeah, I don't really want to optimize things yet, but there is a very like um, need for that very specific optimization. There's a huge need for that uh, specific optimization and that need comes from the bootstrap files. The bootstrap files are really huge, right? So 3.4 megabytes and I include the bootstrap files in a git repo, right? Uh, you could have said that, uh, okay, don't include huge files in a git repo and stuff like that. Uh, git is not designed for huge files and like everything. I heard those arguments many, many times, but I think having the bootstrap files along with the main source code is extremely convenient thing to have. It is extremely, extremely convenient. So convenient that I don't really want to compromise on that. Because essentially you just uh, downloading the entire source code and you have everything, literally everything to bootstrap the uh, the main compiler. Well, not really everything, you still have to install Fuzzum, but apart from Fuzzum, you literally have everything and you can just like start working this, this entire thing without going to third party um, like repos or any other repos, you just like have everything in a single place. So I do think it is extremely convenient and I wish the resulting bootstrap files were a bit smaller. They don't have to be like super, super small. They have to be like small enough that they don't really bother me, right? And they like, they don't, don't blow up the size of the repo too much, right? So right now the size of the repo is not that very big. Uh, it's 27 megabytes, right? So, and I think uh, we can also try to do git gc. Uh, maybe that will clean up a little bit of memory. So, and let's actually see how small it is right now. So this is the size of the whole repo, it's 25. It's not that much, but if we're gonna continue like, you know, pushing all of this stuff, it's gonna grow and grow. And there is a limit to how much you can upload to GitHub and GitLab. So, uh, and this is precisely the reason why I want to kind of stop everything I'm doing and kind of like implement a very small optimization, which will, um, you know, reduce, hopefully reduce the size of the of the final executable. And that optimization is basically dead code elimination. So we're not going to implement very fancy dead code elimination that analyzes control flow and based on control flow, maybe uh, eliminates some branches of the conditions and stuff like that. No, 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 no. We're going to implement dead code elimination on the level of procedures. Right. Uh, so on the level of procedures, essentially, we're going to basically start from the main procedure and follow the calls of other procedures, marking the procedures that we already 
uh, that we already visited and then look at the procedures that we never visited before and those are the procedures that we don't need in our final program and we're not going to include them we're not going to generate assembly out of them so that's basically going to be the idea of that specific dead code elimination uh, and um, i did a little bit of a preparation work. I changed the intermediate representation of the language so the code is a little bit more relocatable. So that should help us to uh, to implement that specific feature. Uh, all right, so I think we've got some... Oh, shit. Uh, did I forget to bring Streamlabs? Oh, no, I didn't. So we've got some subs. Thank you so much, Yellowman563, for uh, two months of tier one subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Epic Port Club. How about that? How about that? Uh, so... Mm. Hi all, did Soding already touch upon the reasons why he removed the source code from the repo? Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Okay, okay, okay. People want juicy, juicy drama. Uh, so, first of all, I did not remove the source code from the repo. This is the uh, first thing. The source code is still there. You can still access everything. So if you take a look at the amount of commits, does it even show the amount of commits? Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's somewhere here. So there is uh, thousands of commits in the uh, GitLab repo and you can still access it. And there is instructions on how to access the last open version. Right. So it's just like I'm not going to be pushing anything new uh, to that specific repo. And here is the reason, essentially. So here in a language, uh, in a language, we have very specific goals. Uh, compiled to native instruction set, Turing complete, statically typed. And these goals were achieved long time ago. I don't really care about them too much. They were achieved, so that's fine. Uh, recently, we achieved self-hosting, right? So this is the self-hosting. And now, by the time of achieving self-hosting, I thought I'm going to be done with the design of the language. I thought I'm going to be happy with the design of the language, but apparently I was not. It's kind of interesting, like the language was good enough to implement it in itself, but I was not super happy with the design. I, in fact, I think Porth is a pretty shitty language. Porth is a pretty shitty language and I'm super not happy with that. So what I decided to do before I go into these interesting topics of optimization and cross-platformness, I decided to put myself like some sort of a goal to improve the design of the language. Right, but here's the thing. I have a challenge. I have a challenge of uh, designing, uh, like improving the design of the language uh, and also maintaining it self-hosted. Right. So, and I thought it's a very cool opportunity to sort of test the soundness of the design of the language. You know what I mean? If you have a self-hosted language and uh, you improve the design of the language and you keep maintaining it self-hosted, it's sort of like a, some test of the soundness of the design, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure if it's a good test, uh, but it's a, it's a test nonetheless. I think it's a relatively good test. So, and here's the thing. Um, optimiz uh, optimization in score platformness is very, very easy to jump to if you just don't care about these two steps, right? So I don't really want to go into optimization and cross platformness unless I nailed it down the design perfectly. But again, it is super easy to just don't care about this thing and jump to these two steps and make a very impressive compiler that's using a different language and don't care about like a better design. It just like implements the current shady design, but optimizes it and make it cross-platform. And that's something that some people try to do, which I'm not super happy with. Let me show you a different example, a uh, different perspective, I would rather say. So let me show you a different perspective. Uh, so essentially we have a language spec, right? So uh, just a second, uh, we have a language spec. So maybe I wanna do something like this. Uh, so here's the language spec. Here's the language spec. And uh, it's like a standard for, for a language, like C, C++, they have their own ISO standards. Uh, JavaScript also has its own standard. And I, I also implement that specific spec. So there is a port port compiler that implements this entire thing. So port, uh, port compiler, all right. But here is an interesting thing. The spec 
is not finished and the language is implemented uh, in itself with unfinished spec. All right. So what some people try to do, they try to not use Porth to implement the Porth spec. Uh, they're trying to use a completely different language, like an alternative compiler, like Alt, uh, Alt compiler. And they're trying to implement this specific spec uh, and make it optimized and cross-platform without caring about this thing. So here's the thing. They're trying to essentially make a competitor compiler Right. So they're essentially competing with me, but they have a very unfair advantage. They have a very unfair advantage. They're using good language for that. Right. So they're using good language to implement a shady language. And because of my goals, I'm forced to use a shady language to implement a shady language. So they're trying to sort of roll me into the game where they have a very unfair advantage over me. You see what I mean? So I'm actually think this is a pretty cool game, right? So let's have like a spec for a language, spec for a language, and let's see who implements a better compiler for it. But uh, let's actually at least let me at, at least finish the spec for the language. You know what I mean? Right? It's so fucking. I don't know. It's it's so unfair, I would say. Right. So you not only don't put any effort into improving the spec, you're just taking a shady spec, implementing it, making it making your compiler look impressive, have like advantage of using the proper language, and I'm forced to sit here with a shady compiler because I have to implement it in a shady language. Right. So it is just like so unfair and it's within the MIT license, okay, sure. It, it is like a fair game by, by the rules that I've set up. It is a fair game, but I don't want to play that game. So I'm up for the competition, sure. Let's see who's going to implement a better Porth compiler. Let's see who's going to implement the Porth compiler. But let me at least finish the definition of Porth. Like, you are trying to play this game while the port definition is not even finished and you have a very unfair advantage. So, and that's why I closed the uh, further development of port. Uh, everything before that is available. Everything before that is available under MIT. It's in the history. It's just like I'm not pushing any, um, uh, any new MIT code for a while. You see what I mean? Right, I want to finish the spec of the language. I want to finish the spec of the language. Then I'm going to open everything and feel free to do whatever you want with the finished spec of the language. Create an alternative compiler. Let's compete. Let's see who's going to implement a better compiler. But let me at least use a better language for in that competition. You see what I mean? It's just like... <sighs> I don't know what to say, and it's just like very, very disappointing, especially that I know the people who's doing that. It is very, very disappointing. Anyway, so that's basically the entire drama, if you wanted to know that. So I'm not going to say anything anymore about that, and I'm going to just continue work on this thing. Uh, and again, feel free to do whatever you want with the previous versions of the compiler. Feel free to do whatever you want. It's under MIT, uh, implement alternative compilers, I don't care. Please wait until I define the specs of the language. I'll define the spec of the language, I'll publish them, and then let's go ahead and play this game. Let's see who's gonna implement a better compiler. I'm up for the competition, I think it's fun, but yeah. Mm. <sighs> mm -mm. Hey, I'm here on live stream for the first time. I got a video recommended on YouTube yesterday for the first time, and I love it. Thank you. I'm really glad that you love it. I work really hard on them. I'm watching this sports uh, playlist from the beginning, and it is impressive. Thank you so much. Um, it's actually kind of cool uh, to work on this thing, and I actually learned a lot while implementing this entire stuff. Uh, I'm inspired by your skills. Uh, okay, so everyone is... Um, impressed by my skills but i'm not really doing anything special first of all i'm developing projects from scratch and i know all of the ins and outs of the projects that i'm working on so which kind of gives me an advantage right and also i'm not forced to work with uh you know big old legacy code bases right so on big old legacy code bases i am as ineffective as anyone else believe me <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So if you will watch me to take some, I don't know, Apache, old Apache project uh, written in Java and try to hack it and add a feature, you will be thoroughly disappointed. Right. So I'm not really that skillful. So it's just like I know the, the project that I'm working on because I implemented them from scratch. Um, so yeah so and like anyone who worked on their projects they usually know their project like really really well to be as effective as i am on your own projects uh, so fair enough thanks for sharing the juicy drum you're welcome you're welcome uh it's a very interesting perspective by the way like it's kind of difficult for me to say whether the behavior of those people is okay or whether it is not okay uh, because I never kind of encountered that before um, but it just makes me feel really really unpleasant and I don't like that and I just don't want to feel that way and that's why I close this source code so yeah it's kind of like I think I'm starting to understand why new emerging languages are initially de uh, developed behind the closed doors or, like, like there's think uh, like a rock language uh, i think i'm pretty sure this language is meant to be open source but the initial release is completely closed and there are some occasional like uh demos uh, on talks and stuff like that and for instance jai the john blows language also uh, is planned to be completely open source but it's still developed like the initial release is still developed behind the closed doors and i think i'm slowly starting to under understand the reason why people do that slowly but steadily uh, and uh, yeah, so it's just very new for me. <laughs> it's, it, is, it is very new for me. Um, interestingly enough, like uh, the ripping off of Jai got to the point where John stopped to do any reports and demos, and it's actually kind of interesting. But anyway, so what's funny is that I'm not even trying to make like a, the next killer of C++ or something like that. I just want to finish my thoughts. Can I just freaking finish my thoughts before people start roping me into weird games of whose compiler is better. It's just, yeah. It's like, if, the internet is very noisy. It is, internet is very noisy. It's like, you're trying to finish your thoughts and everyone is just like, keep interrupting you all the time. Um, you want the rules of the game to be clear before start playing? That's fair enough. I think I think so, I do agree with that. Like, I really think so. Um, all right, so we have some subs. Um, all right. <laughs> Can somebody sum up drama real quick? So this is going to be on YouTube. Don't worry about that. So uh, it's going to be on YouTube. You'll be able to watch it from scratch. Um, okay. Remember the stream where you hacked a tiny CC that was cool stuff, although a smaller code base compared to big open source code bases. Also, the source code of uh, tiny CC is actually very, very clean. So that was actually kind of cool. Zozin, why is thoughts not finished? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Essentially, drama is a sign of a mature link. Probably. That's actually a very interesting way of looking at it. Thank you. Mm. You should make a shorter flight. I don't really want to uh, bring too much attention to that. So it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. All right. So let's talk about dead code elimination of... I'm not going to say that name. It actually sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, all right. So do I need to bootstrap something? Let me quickly to bootstrap, uh, bootstrap the, uh, the entire compiler. All right. Elimination. No, I'm not going to say that. So somebody's going to clip that out of the context and then I'm going to get banned on Twitch. No, I don't want to have that. All right. Uh, I have enough shit to deal with these days. Okay. There we go. Mm, so, and I'm gonna just do that. I really like the bootstrapping instructions. <laughs> it's, it's like a very funny joke, right? So you do these three steps, and then you can just repeat these steps like indefinitely, right? So it's just like a really funny joke. <laughs> I don't know. So I just, I, I keep making funny jokes in my source code that only I laugh at them. Uh, but maybe one day somebody's also going to be uh, able to laugh at them. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there we go. So everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be working. So, and as you can see, you can just keep recompiling the compiler like over and over again, and it's going to stay the same. 
Uh, okay, so see, doing the hard part, implementing the compiler in itself. So what I want to do, uh, like I want to actually understand um, how much, you know, how much improvement in the size of the executable we'll get if we implement the dead code elimination. Right, so let's actually implement a code that just walks through the call graph and marks the procedures that are, uh, you know, visited. And let's see how many unvisited procedures do we have. Right, maybe we're not going to have, uh, maybe not, we're not going to gain anything. Maybe we use everything that we have in the standard library, which is quite unlikely, by the way. Um, right, so if I take a look at the STD, there's at least something related to the network that we definitely don't use in the compiler. Right, uh, so we definitely don't use, uh, it's probably in the Linux, I think. Right, we don't use uh, like a network related stuff in the compiler. Also terminal related stuff. I have a function that checks whether the uh, particular file descriptor is TTY and whatnot. Oh, by the way, recently I implemented like a small terminus layer uh, for, for ports, right? So functions like tc get attr and tc set attr. So now you don't have to like set you don't have to do STTY before you can run the snake example, right? So you can essentially just do port, uh, and then you can do examples, snake, and you can play the snake game. Uh, there we go. So you don't have to do anything because the snake game just sets up the terminal state automatically for you. And that's actually very cool. And then it sets it back to what it was when you quit the game. So also like I added this, the score and uh, also like the tutorial that explains how you can play the game and uh, you can pause this entire thing and unpause it. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. So and this is really an import by the way, right? Isn't that insanely impressive? Tell me, tell me that it's not insanely impressive. I think it is insanely impressive. All right, so let's quit this entire thing and let's continue. And uh, if we implement dead code elimination, uh, also other applications compiled will be um, gaining from that, I suppose. Um, pause buffering optimal movement is now possible. <laughs> right. That's true. Uh, okay, so we've got some subs. Thank you so much, Round Lay, for tier one sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Sam Wise TTV, thank you so much for tier one subs uh, as well. Really, really appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, let's go. Uh -huh. So how are we going to be doing that? Uh, I think I need some sort of a command uh, for this entire thing. Uh, but maybe I'm going to just use the the compilation command, right? So let's go with the compilation command. All right, and in here, what do we do? So we're generating the code. Here we compile in the code, right? So we compile in the code and then we type checking. So I suppose here I can just put something like DCE, right? So this is going to be DCE and it will perform the dead code elimination on the compiled code that is also type checked. So that's basically what we're going to have. Uh, so we have a raid from Julius Trader. Thank you so much for, for the raid. I think I'm going to actually uh, disable followers mode. Uh, followers off. So uh, raiders, feel free to say hi if you wanted to, but don't want to, uh, you know, follow me. Um, hello, hello, everyone. We're just developing our own programming language. And I'm not joking. We, in fact, developing our own programming language. So the programming language looks like this. It is a very new programming language. That's why it is so unreadable because it's a new, fresh uh, compile, um, programming language. So, and the cool thing about this programming language is that it's written in itself, right? So uh, essentially here I have uh, an executable, like actually uh, native executable. Uh, so as you can see, it says executable. And I also have a source code um, called port.port. And that is the source code of the language itself. Right, and what you can do, you can take the binary of the language and say, compile the language, and that language will basically replace its own binary. So the language is written in itself. It's self-hosting, uh, it's so-called self-hosting. Uh, self-hosting, 
right? It's when the language is written in itself, uh, programming language. It's really hard to achieve, but I want you to achieve that because I think it's pretty interesting and pretty cool, right? The computer programming self-hosting is the use of a program as part of the two-chain operating system that produces new version of the same program. Holy shit. That's the worst definition of this in that thing. And uh, the language is not capable of much, but uh, at least you can implement a snake game in it. So this is a snake game entirely implemented in that language. And it's a terminal game, but I mean, it still works. Right? Uh, the language is capable of interacting with operating system and stuff like that. So it can put some characters on the screen and whatnot. So, yeah. And we also implemented like a very simple web server in that language. So uh, I think there is an example called website. Uh, so website, right. So, and right now the website is listening at uh, port 6969. So let's actually go there. And here, oh shit. Wait a second. Oh, okay. So it was a cache. It was a cache. There we go. So this is a web application that is written in Porth, right? So, and it's a very simple web application. It just counts how many times you loaded this, uh, this page. And it counts that on the back end, right? So it's not the front end. It's the back end that actually counts the requests, uh, right? And then you can actually shut down the, uh, the application, right? So here is the application listening. You can uh, uh, click quit. And that quits the application. As you can see, the application has quitted. So uh, I have just the terminal freed up. So this is the kind of stuff you can do. And if you refresh the page, it's not serving anything anymore. So that's that's very cool. Um, oh, you implemented at least part of the terminals. Yeah, I literally implemented two functions <laughs> from terminals. I didn't. I, I don't know how many functions do you have in terminals, but yeah. Um, and yeah, and also we have a game of life, right? Some people say in the chat that uh, game of life and stuff like that. We do have a game of life. Yeah. So we have a, like a Martian gliders. Um, so this is a game of life. Mm -mm. Yes, yes, yes. Go away this. And uh, we also have a simpler example of, uh, you know, turning complete, completeness rule 110. Right, so this is basically the pattern of rule 110, which also kind of demonstrates that it is turning complete. Uh, TC gets and TC sets. Yes, yes. TC gets and TC sets. Mm, 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 mm. All right. So that's basically what we're up to. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the rate. And let's continue. So right now we are working on dead code elimination. Essentially, we're trying to make the compiler to remove the code that is not used by the program to basically not blow up the executable. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I found it interesting that EastTTI internally just uses TC gets and checks for in no TTY. Uh, in my implementation, uh, or what, what are you talking about? Uh, let me actually check check it out. I think it's Linux. Um, so I guess this is how I do that. I stole this implementation from Musil, by the way. <laughs> I actually steal a lot of shit from Musil. Uh, and I really recommend to check out this library because it's a very simple uh, C library in libc. Oh, I see. But I also kind of stole it from libc. It's just like I stole it from Musil libc. <laughs> uh, and yeah, also let me actually give that in the description. Uh, all right, so Musil. Uh, okay, that's cool. Mm -mm. If you can overload names in let bindings, can you move and by moving at the end of current procedure? I'm not sure if I understand the question, but I was actually thinking to make let bindings kind of similar to how they are in um, in a camel. In a camel, basically, when you do let in, actually in a camel you have precisely that syntax. You basically define it up until the end of the scope. So maybe we can allow people to just write stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Right. So it kind of makes it similar to a camel because this is how you usually do in a camel. Uh, a camel let. Um, so a camel examples. Uh, let me see. Uh, so I need, to, I need to find like a more complex. Yeah, there we go. So this is how it usually looks in a camel. It's like let and in. Let and in, let and in. It's just like a sequence of let ins. We can at some point do something like this, and the code in port is going to look very Ocamlish. Uh, right. 
and also we have memories in here. And by the way, speaking of this language being unfinished, uh, in my final idea when I had, when I started this language, I didn't even want to have the memories. Like, memories like that is a huge hack that I want to get rid of at the end of the design process. Like, I don't want to have that. I think it's pretty shitty. Like, it's, just, it's not a good language. Something like that is not very great because this is untyped. Uh, right. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, because I'm a huge uh, fan, fan of static typing and stuff like that. So, for me, this kind of stuff is really, really painful. Like, I really don't like... Uh, you know, languages with weak typing and dynamic typing. Uh, but that's what I'm forced to use because I'm trying to do the hard thing, not the easy thing. I'm trying to do the hard thing. Design a language in itself. Um, all right. Mm, a macro is deprecated completely. Yeah, ma macros are deprecated. So anyway, let's actually do uh, dead code elimination. Okay. So we spend too much time talking about something that doesn't matter really in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter um all right so let me let me see so yeah this is the compilation and where is the generation okay so here is the compilation here is the type checking so here we're gonna have dce right and let me find the procedure in here all right and then here we're gonna have dce right and we can say something like uh, dead code elimination is not implemented yet. There we go. So what I do actually, since it's gonna sort of like a break the compiler, I'm gonna use the bootstrap compiler to, to work on this entire stuff and I'm gonna just recompile the compiler with itself. Uh, there we go. There we go. So it says dead code elimination is not implemented. Okay, so what, what, what I wanna do in here, I wanna iterate through, um, maybe not. Yeah, I need to find main proc uh, lookup by name, right? So proc lookup by name. So, and that thing is supposed to return uh, uh, lookup. It's supposed to return the pointer to the procedure structure. And in the point, in, in the procedure structure, we probably need to add some stuff to indicate that we already sort of visited that procedure or not, right? So uh, let's introduce something like uh, um, used, right? Um, maybe not that. Eh, used. Uh, and this is going to be a Boolean, right? So by default, we assume that they're not used, right? So this is a, like a Boolean flag specifically for the procedure. Uh, specifically for the procedure. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, we're implementing DCE to make the binaries a little bit smaller, but we're not trying to like achieve the optimal size, right? So the goal specifically is make them small enough so it is acceptable to keep bootstrap uh, files in the repo itself. Because I think like committing 3.4 megabyte files all the time is kind of like a waste. So I want to like reduce them a little bit. I want to go too hard on dead code elimination. I just want to like reduce them a little bit. Um, so, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Two, 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 two. all right, all right, so this is going to be DCE and uh, proc uh, lookup. So, and in here we're going to have the proc. Unfortunately, I cannot use proc because it's a keyword, so I have to use uh, something like this. Uh, and if proc, um, I think I have something like null. If it is null, I'm gonna uh, throw an assertion. Um, input uh, assertion failed. Mm, expected um, the main procedure. Input one, there we go. Uh, so I'm gonna just keep the to do in here. Uh, so we have a proc and essentially what I wanna do, I wanna start iterating through the proc. Mm. I suppose. Maybe I need to have some sort of a recursive function. Um, I need some sort of a recursive function that accepts the address of the procedure or maybe the um, the pointer to the procedure, right? So uh, it's going to be called foo and it accepts the pointer of the procedure and it basically walks through the procedure. Um, so let's call this walk uh, call... Mm, walk 
procs. Right, walk proc. All right, so that's what we have in here. Uh -huh. To do walk proc is not implemented yet. All right, and in here we just check that it's that. And then uh, I'm going to just do proc walk proc. And that is basically it. Um, though, after that, after we walk through all of the procedures, starting from the main, we want to iterate through all of the procedures and uh, see if some of them were not visited. Right, so that's what I essentially want to do. So while uh, dupe and then uh, procs, a uh, proc count, procs count, I suppose, procs count uh, less, right, and here we're going to drop. Uh, so this is the ID, and I want to duplicate that ID. Uh, size of proc multiplied by proc, and then uh, prex, prox point of one. So let's actually do it like this. So this is the index, right? So this is the index. And for the index, mm -mm, I am doing the following thing. So maybe I'm going to do the, uh, something like this. Dupe size of proc. Uh, proc multiply, uh, then uh, prox plus pointer, uh, prox point pointer, and there we go. I have i and proc, and in here I take proc. Is it used? Uh, right. So is it used? If it is used, I want to print the proc name. Uh, so I'll take proc proc name uh, pointer plus. I'm going to read it as a string, and I'm going to just print this entire thing with the end line, right? And if it's not used, actually not used, right? So if it's not used, we're going to print that. We're going to print that. So I'm going to say something like uh, unused procs, right? Unused procs. So this is what it puts. This, uh, these are unused procs. And after that, what I need to do is just like I need to increment i. So that's what we're going to have in here. So yeah, that's the loop that iterates through all of the procedures that we have, checks whether they used or not. If they're not used, we're going to print them just to see. So on top of that, maybe it would make sense to also print their locations, right? So it's going to be proc, proc location, pointer plus, um, pointer plus, and this one is going to be uh, put lock, right? So that prints the location. Then I'm going to separate this entire thing. It's going to be puts, and then we print the, the name. And also I want to align this entire stuff like that. So, and here, let's put it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, now, let me try to compile the uh, the entire compiler and see how it goes. So we have unhandled data, which is understandable, right? So let's drop that data. Uh, let's, in fact, drop that data. And, uh, okay, walk proc is not implemented. So that's precisely what I wanted to see. Okay, so the way we're going to implement that, essentially, we're going to take the address and we start walking starting from that specific address, right? So uh, let me actually do it like this. Uh, let proc in, and there we go. So we took this entire thing, so the proc. Then I take proc address, right? So this is a proc address. Uh, I read this as an address, and I start iterating. And for how long do I iterate? I suppose I want to iterate while the address is within the boundaries of the entire array, right? It is within the boundaries of the entire array. And while we don't see... <coughs> Actually, we know the size of the procedure. We know the size of the procedure and uh, where it starts. Maybe we can just iterate starting from zero up until the size of the procedure and that is going to be it. So yeah, maybe we can do that. So I think we have proc size. Yeah, yeah proc size is a thing. So this is the size, mm, which is rather interesting, right? So which is rather interesting. So that means maybe I want to, mm -mm -mm. maybe I want to do it like this. So and in here we have peak, um, peak i n, um, and while essentially i and n 
are less, right? So that's what we're doing. Um, so while i is less than that, and then in here, then in here, I do i and n, uh, and this is where we're gonna do the interesting stuff. Um, mm -mm. So I'm gonna do size of proc, uh, size of proc, I'm gonna multiply the size of proc, then procs uh, plus pointer, and that gives me the proc. Right, that gives me the proc, but that's really not enough because I also have to do proc, maybe proc start as well. So let me put it this way, uh, proc, proc, address, pointer, integer, right, like this. So I have the start somewhere here. And also, since I'm picking, I don't see the start and I don't really care, uh, but I can get the start in here, right? I'm getting the start in here. Uh, which is rather convenient, right? So, and this is I, what I have to do here is just like, this is the start, this is the uh, start address, then I add I to that, then I multiply this entire thing by the size of the procedure, then I take the procedure and I get the proc, right? So here is the proc. Um, oh, I think I'm an idiot. It has to be OP, yeah has to be OP, so it's OPS. And this is the specific OP. Uh, this is the specific OP. And now uh, we want to take a look at the OP operand, right? So mm, the OP operand. So OP operand uh, pointer plus, and I'm going to read this entire thing. Um, right. So what I'm thinking is that maybe I'm going to just do it like that, right? I just do dupe and swap and that way i have the operand of the op uh, right and here i can just like look for that operand but on top of that i think i don't really care about the operand i care about also the type of this entire thing right i also care about the type so let's align this stuff like that so the uh type operand and op itself uh though i'm not 100 sure if i will care about op but that's fine Okay, so now the only thing that we care about, I think, the only thing that we care about is OP calls, right? Because that actually performed the call and OP push address off, right? So we have a feature in Porth that allows you to take uh, like one particular procedure, right? Something like full and say, take the address of that procedure and it will uh, put the address of that procedure onto the uh, data stack. So then later you can call that procedure from the data stack. So I think taking an address of the procedure should be considered uh, using the procedure. So if you're trying to take an address of particular procedure, that is not unused code. So it should not be illuminated by the dead code elimination. At least for now, we're not trying to build like a very fancy dead code elimination that can understand the, like intent and stuff like that. Uh, right, so yeah. I, th I think the only two uh, things we care about is actual call and pushing address. Um, Mm -mm, and pushing the address. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Programming is weird in that it deals uh, with both the nanometer size transistors on the CPU and also potentially terabytes of data, a huge difference in scale. Yeah, so it is true, but the current trend in programming is uh, trying to, is believing rather, is believing that it is possible to basically abstract away uh, the nanometer size transistors so people can code in this abstract, you know, uh, <laughs> abstract crystal castles of things that are not computers. I'm not sure how to explain that, but people believe that it is possible and it kind of is possible for certain applications of the computers. Right. Uh, for certain applications of computers, it is possible to abstract away the computer completely. But it is basically like creating a user interface for non-technical users. That's basically what it is. Um, all right. Anyway, 
So let me let me see OP call. So we want to see whether the type is equal to the OP call, right? If it is equal to OP call, we're going to do one thing. Uh, walking uh, OP call is not implemented yet, right? It is not implemented yet. And then OP um, OP push address of, right? So this is to do uh, to do walking op push address of is not implemented yet as well right so otherwise we don't care right we literally don't and i think i'm gonna do it like that oh by the way if i chain else with if i have to put a uh, star in here um which is very bike shady like i i'm probably not gonna discuss that i would rather prefer something like a leaf so maybe i'm gonna change that in the future but doesn't matter um, okay, so in case of else, we just like ignore this entire thing, right? In case of else, we just ignore it. Um, all right, so and after that, what do I have to do? I have to put start, then uh, I plus and then N, right? Something like that, which could be implemented in a more optimal way, right? Uh, but I probably don't really care about that right now, right? So there we go. Mm. Abstractions are helpful in any line of work and electrician doesn't need to understand the quantum. Here's the thing. Abstractions in mathematics and abstractions in programming are kind of a different things. They work differently, completely. So abstractions about like in mathematics is about compressing the complexity. But what we discovered uh, in programming uh, abstracting the complexity does not remove the complexity, right? In mathematics, abstraction is about reducing the complexity, but for some reason in programming, abstracting away complexity really does not remove it because the complexity keeps leaking through the abstractions and the complexity in mathematics doesn't really leak through as much for some reason, I don't know why. So it doesn't really work that way. Um, is arithmetics with addresses possible? Yes, because you can basically cast it uh, into a number. <laughs> but officially, uh, adding number to a type address is not supported. But you can circumvent that by, you know, just casting it to something else. Um, it is an unsafe language after all. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that I'm using Emacs, by the way. Mm -mm. Mm. Abstraction in mathematics pushes the complexity to the people who actually care about it, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, so what do we have in here? Okay, so we have some data, uh, which I probably need to basically remove afterwards. So essentially what I have to do is just like a drop, drop, drop. Uh -huh. Hopefully that is it. Okay, so walking OP call is not implemented. That's actually pretty cool. And you know what? We actually know the location of this thing. So I can take the, you know what? I can take the token, right? So that way I'm taking the token for this entire thing. And then I can say token, uh, token location uh, pointer plus, and then say located here, right? Located here. Uh, didn't really work that well. It didn't really work that well because you're not supposed to read it as an integer. Um, okay, so uh, and the call, the first OP call that we ever do in the entire program is here, which is oh, okay, so yeah, that, that's true because we're starting walking through the like through the main, uh, right? We're walking through the main. And uh, this is the first call, and it is located in here. This is true, because the first thing is a string, and the second one is the OP call. So, and now, the next thing we need to do is just continue this thing. So, according to, like, what uh, operand of OP call is, let me actually find it. Uh, so, OP call calls a procedure, right? So, the operand type is address. And it's an index of the calling procedure in a global prox array. So this is not true anymore, by the way. It's it's not address. It's an index, right? So yeah. Uh, all right.
right, so we have a little bit of documentation for the intermediate representation. Uh, won't this crash if you have a recursive function? No, it will just go forever. Uh, well, it will also overflow this stack. But I'm kind of in the middle of writing. Okay, so yet again, people are criticizing my unfinished code for being unfinished. So, um, all right. So there, now, what do we need to do? <clears throat> we need to uh, take this entire procedure, right? Uh, operand uh, size of proc, uh, right? So this is size of proc, I'm multiplying it. And then I take procs and then plus pointer. So this is basically the next proc. Uh, do we even have, so here's the proc and this is, this is gonna be the next proc, uh, next proc, right. something like this, next proc. And what we wanna do, we wanna see, have we already visited that uh, procedure, right? Mm, please don't type unfinished code. Well, that's literally what I did recently. I closed my unfinished code. Deny. Uh, so, mm -mm. so proc uh, used, All right? Proc used pointer plus, and then I'm read it as a boolean. If it's not used, if it's not used, I'm calling walk proc yet again. So this is going to be uh, walk proc, and just walk this entire thing. But before we can do that, what I need to do, I need to mark it as used. So we'll have to do something like. Uh, something like this. So read it again and uh, just save it uh, as a boolean. There we go. We might as well even abstract it out slightly, right? So in here I can say used, right? And like so. If not used, true. Um, and that was weird, but anyway. Right. If not used, make it used and do another round of this entire thing. Um, okay, so let in used. Mm, but if it's used, we just basically skip it and we never do anything in here. Right, we never do anything in here. So I guess that's it. Right, so that should start walking through the uh, through the things. I also want to add located here in here, just in case, because I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, and let's try to recompile this thing and see uh, if it's working somewhere. Okay, uh, walk proc is not implemented yet. Oh, this one is fun. So yeah, so we kind of finished walk proc at this point. So we reached the point when we exit from this recursive function. All right, so that makes sense. Uh, so walking uh, op call op, op call is not implemented. It is implemented now, uh, right? So I'm removing all of these to dos. Um, okay, so we reached the point where we trying to come uh, basically walk through uh, push address off, right? So and it is located here. It is actually located here. So this is the first uh, address off. Interestingly enough, I think it is basically the same thing. I'm pretty sure it is basically the same thing. So DCE. Um, so because of that, I should be able to compress this thing. Uh, walk proc. Uh, yeah. So type equal that, or the type is equal to that. So I think I, I can literally just compress them together because I, they're not that different. Uh, I don't think they are. So that should be fine. Um, okay, so look at that. Look at that compact loop. Right. So we can do something like this. Uh, maybe, maybe even something like this. Uh huh. And uh, there we go. There we go. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh shit, it actually worked. Uh, uh, unused procs. Which is rather weird. It is saying that I never use this thing. And it is saying that I never use this thing. Oh, I know why. Because they are inlined. They are inlined. All of the inlined procedures are not really used and we can actually illuminate them. That's very cool. But what's interesting is that if you try to take an address of an inlineable procedure, it will succeed. It will succeed. But because of that, it will not be illuminated. So it kind of automatically works out. Uh, it kind of automatically works out. This is actually very cool. Is there something more uh, substantial that we don't use? 
uh, local memory is clean. Oh, I never used this. This is so cool. Well, I mean, it's also inlineable. Um, and that code elimination is not implemented yet. Okay, so this is not true anymore. Uh, okay, this is very interesting. So that's what we got. Um, Lexa, next line. And this is also because it's inlineable. Uh, TMP append, TMP. We kind of use like pretty much everything, if you think about that. So all of this, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so at least now we know uh, what we're not using and what we can sort of illuminate. Mm -mm. Toggle. Oh, this is a fun, this is a fun thing. So essentially, <laughs> it's a very fun small uh, function. It takes a pointer to a boolean. Right, unfortunately, I cannot express pointers to other types, right? I can only say a pointer, but here it takes a pointer to a boolean, right? And what it does, it toggles that boolean by that pointer. So if you have some sort of a variable, uh, like some sort of a flag, uh, which is a boolean, right? You can always toggle that flag, right? So because by doing flag, you push a pointer and toggle accept the pointer. It's almost like inc64, which also accept the pointer, but it's just like for booleans. Uh, for some reason, I really like this sort of like small DSL. You have a pointer to boolean, you can toggle it. It's just like toggle it. It's so cool. I don't know why, uh, but and it's very simple implementation. Just read there's a boolean, you swap it, you, you know, toggle it, uh, not it, and then you save it back. Um, so, yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, right, we have a bunch of stuff in here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Make your type C to... God damn it! You're, you're spoiling my idea. You sp God damn it. Okay, so somebody spoiled uh, my idea that I wanted to have. Essentially, what I was thinking... All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so, fourth mode. What I was thinking is that between proc and in, I would have a mini language, mini language on the level of types. That is literally what I was thinking about. I was thinking that pointer is not going to mean pointer anymore, but basically make the previous type a pointer to that type. So something like uh, int pointer means pointer to an integer, right? So, and then you can say, okay, pointer to pointer. So essentially what it does, it evaluates uh, like porth but instead of values, it uses types. And you sort of like craft your own type. Right. And I was thinking that maybe I'm going to allow some constructions in here, like lets to refer to specific types. And then like maybe ifs to create optional types. Right. So maybe uh, you can have like check if that type that you're returning here is false. That means you're not going to push that type and it's going to be evaluated on the level of a type system. So uh, I was thinking about this kind of stuff, but I don't really want to go there quite yet because it sounds quite complicated, but I was just like fantasizing about this thing, um, like having like a small mini language in the type signatures, like also stack based mini language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so let me, let me see, let me see. Um, what I was doing, does anyone remember? I was doing something. Um, okay, so we now know what we use and what we don't use. Right. Now we know. The question is, how do we eliminate the, um, the unused code? Right, how do we eliminate it? The way we actually compile everything, so there's a global ops array, and that global ops array is essentially the uh, array of instructions. Then the generator goes through this array and generates assembly out of those instructions. So we can write a simple program. Let's actually write a simple program. Of course, uh, we're not going to be using the standard library, right? Uh, so it doesn't include too much stuff because we haven't implemented the that code elimination. So this is going to be full. And in here, I'm going to just print 69, uh, right? And then we're going to have something like bar, which prints 420, right? Uh, and then we're going to have main. Uh, which calls foo and calls bar, right? So we have this kind of stuff. 
So if we try to compile this entire thing, obviously it will print 69 for 20. Um, so I'm gonna just do something like that. Simple.port and there we go. So this is a 69 for 20. Surprisingly, uh, oh, it also unused procs. This is not true. Um, this is used proc. You know what I forgot? I think I forgot to say that main is un, uh, is actually used before actually walking, if you know what I mean. Right, when I start walking, um, walk proc, uh, where is this thing? Uh -huh. So as you can see, next proc, and I mark it as used, and only then I walk there. Uh, so, and in here, I suppose I forgot um, to mark main as a used one. So it's going to be true. Uh, proc, proc, used, pointer plus, and I'm going to just save it like this. Uh, right, well, let me recompile the compiler. So I'll have to use the bootstrap version of this thing. Uh -huh. Do I have main there? I don't have a main, which is fine. So, and now I'm going to use this compiler um, to compile the simple thing. Right. It says that the bar is unused, which is weird. Like, why do you say that the bar is unused? Because it is used, as far as I'm concerned. Right. So this is really, really weird. Mm. This is really, really weird. So it kind of stops in here, and I don't really understand why. But, okay. Uh, oh! Maybe because the size... Ah, I think I know why. Because the size of the procedure does not represent what I think it represents. Yeah. The size does not include one instruction, I think. Maybe. Um, let, me, let me see. Uh, so we start at zero and this is the size size probably does not include the preparation so we might actually do something like this you know what i think like this is not a particularly re reliable way of iterating over the body of the procedure i think i should just start uh, at a particular address right so i just start at the at the address in here so this is the address and i move until i get to the return, right? If I get to the return, um, OP return, I just like, uh, you know, bail off or something. So I think that's that's basically the way I'm gonna go about that. So, mm -hmm. so let's do the start and some other stuff. It's a little bit dangerous, but uh, I think it's gonna be fine. I think it's gonna be fine. So the address is I, right? So let's keep it as I. Uh, and in here, unfortunately, I'll have to do this additional annoying thing. Yikes. Okay, so let me let me try to do that. So this is the address, right? So this is the integer. And I essentially take that integer and multiply it by that stuff. Then I do ops and then uh, plus pointer. Right, there we go. And what I do in here, I just speak into that thing and I take op operand pointer plus, uh, I read it, and I continue doing all of that stuff, actually type, uh, while this thing is not op return. While it is not op return. As soon as it, it's op return, I just don't care about it. Though I can even simplify the entire stuff. Right, so this is going to be dupe. Uh, right, so dupe op type pointer plus. Mm -hmm. And in here, uh, right, we have like start and n and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. I can just like put op, uh, right? And here that means I can just do op uh, and just do like that and remove op. Cool. And then at the end, I advance op by uh, size of op, right? Like so. But it's a pointer, so that means I'll have to do it. Uh, like that, maybe, I don't remember. Um, okay, so that's how we're gonna be doing all that. So as soon as you get to the OP return, you just like remove, uh, you, you, st you stop iterating. Mm -mm. All right, 
So let me let me try to do that. Uh, not enough arguments for the drop. Yeah, so we only need to do drop once. Okay, that's fine. All right, so that looks cool. So we have this stuff that is unused, and the argument is definitely unused. Uh, all of the stuff that is unused is essentially inlineable anyway, so we're not like not using big things. We're pretty much using everything, um, which is fine, I guess. Right. So is it gonna make it? like smaller is it really gonna make it smaller like i'm afraid that maybe it's not gonna make it smaller <laughs> at least that much all right uh but yeah mm. i predict the bug when early return will be implemented yeah there will be some sort of a bug but this is a temporary thing right we'll see so it's yet another to do about things biting me in the ass and me forgetting about that Right, we already had that before, I think, with the mutual recursion. Yeah, yeah, so we had that with the mutual recursion. Um, all right, so let me, let me see. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, this might bite us in the ass when we implement uh, the early return, right? Was that the bite of ages? <laughs> right. Um. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Address of another proc call like another proc. Yeah. Mm. You inspired me to create my programming language. Yeah, I'm. I'm really glad that inspiring people to make their own programming languages. By the way, speaking of, if those people who trying to implement um, a competing compiler with port just went ahead and implemented their own port inspired language I would be totally fine with that right so I would be totally fine with them implementing their own port inspired language that is better than port but not compatible with port not trying to eradicate the port compiler or anything like that it's just like just do your own thing man seriously just why don't you want to do your own thing? Do you lack imagination so much? I don't know. I'm super happy that what I do inspires people to go and make their own thing. But I'm so disappointed when people start doing the shit like this. It's just like... I don't know. Um... So let me let me see. Mm. You're definitely giving me some ideas to explore in the context of my own fourth system. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that uh, because I thought I don't know. I had a feeling that like an actual fourth, um, you know, fan would hate something like fourth because I'm kind of semi and intentionally going against everything fourth stands for. You know what I mean, right? So the code that I write in Porth is very much not Forthish, and I know that, and I'm doing that kind of semi-intentionally. And I would expect that the Forth developers would hate the thing I'm doing, but since you are like a, a huge Forth fan and you say that I'm giving you ideas, I'm really uh, happy to hear that. Actually, I'm super happy to hear that. Mm -mm. The problem is that Forth is just like personally not my thing which is totally fine. I'm not saying that Forth is bad because of that. It's just like, I do not enjoy the style of programming Forth like sort of like proposes. Um, I like some ideas of concatenative languages, but the way Forth does that is just like, it's really not for me. Maybe because I'm young, because Forth was developed a long time ago and it sort of like reflects a, a very old style of programming. And I was raised in a completely different environment, right? Uh, where yeah, I'm like from a different generations of programmer programmers, and that's why I kind of like do things differently. Uh, oh yeah, this looks nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually heard, uh, you know, first first developers uh, thoughts about my language. I actually heard that. So 
because I read the comments on my videos all the time and fourth developers also watch my videos and I, I know I know what they think about fourth <laughs> so uh, yeah <clears throat> but that's basically a reflection of my generation of programmers I suppose um, yeah mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> I went into a fourth thread once and it was just par paragraphs of shitting on millennials. <laughs> I can imagine that. But the the style that fourth sort of proposes is really great for very, very low level development in a very limited environment, right? So the style that Porth uh, is using is actually really bad for embedded, is in a very limited embedded. But Porth is actually super great. Um, so because of that, I can I kind of see where Porth is coming from. Um, Forth is bad because it's not statically typed. But the dynamicness of Porth actually enables a lot of cool features of Porth, right? Because it's kind of like you can do some kind of cool metaprogramming, right? So, and fourth is kind of close in that sense to Lisp, where the compilation and runtime, the um, the difference between compilation and the runtime is actually very, very blurry, right? So, and it's kind of difficult to achieve that with a, like, strong statically typed language, right? Like fourth. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so what I was doing, uh, I wanted to just test uh, the simple thing and see. Uh, yeah, there we go, unused procs. We don't have unused procs. What's interesting is that, uh, okay, so if I run this entire thing, it says 69 for 20, but if I go into the simple and say that this thing is inlined, right, this thing is inlined, it will say that the bar is unused because it was probably inlined. Uh, but now this thing is uh, like that. Okay, cool. Mm -mm. Now, so there is a feature in the Porth compiler which allows you to dump the intermediate representation. So this is how the intermediate representation looks like. Uh, you can go through this thing. So we literally have 12, not 11 because we start uh, from zero, uh, 12 instruction uh, instructions in the intermediate representation. So we can go through them. So this is a pre preparation and uh, push print return. Uh, preparation push print return. So essentially, right now, if I did everything correctly, the entire OP array uh, is going to be basically sections of the procedures, right? If we did everything correctly, right? If we did everything correctly, it's going to be basically like that. Uh, so we have chunks of the procedures. And if we want to illuminate a certain procedure, what we have to do, we have to remove a region uh, of uh, related to that procedure, right? So essentially, we have a region that represents this procedure, and we want to illuminate it. We just have to remove that region, offsetting all of the instructions in here, right? So, but that means that the code within the procedure has to be perfectly relocatable, right? It has to be perfectly relocatable. Um, and is it perfectly relocatable? Recently, I worked really hard to make the instructions of the intermediate representation relocatable. Essentially, uh, uh, essentially things like op if, uh, op if, uh, op if star, uh, and so on and so forth, they are not using absolute addresses anymore as I did initially in the language, right? When I only started to develop this language, I knew nothing about how to write this kind of stuff. So I just like slapped absolute addresses in there and called it a day. And uh, then I learned that to relocate the code, you need relative addresses. And this is what I did off screen. So all of these things use relative addresses. So it's really easy to t take chunk of code that contains ifs and whiles and just move it around and it's still gonna work. Uh, right. And furthermore, because of that, I enabled inlining for ifs and whiles now. So for quite some time, you couldn't inline a procedure with ifs. Now you can. I actually allow that because they are perfectly relocatable. Um, so you still cannot inline procedures with local memories, but that's a completely different story. So I actually kind of plan to get rid of the local memories because we have LED bindings. 
Uh, but yeah, that, that's the story for another time. That's the story for another time. Um, because it's not perfectly like you, it's difficult to completely get rid of the um, local memories because sometimes you need to pre-allocate a buffer of specific size and give a pointer to that buffer somewhere and let bindings don't allow you to do this kind of stuff but you can kind of do that by using temporary scratch buffers so if you need to pre-allocate a local buffer of small buffer and give a pointer somewhere you can allocate it in a temporary scratch buffer uh, which kind of eliminates the need for local memories but it's less convenient so it's like it's a design process right so I'll, I'll need to think about that. Um. <clears throat> okay, so, and on top of that, when you call a procedure, right, as, as we already knew, um, we don't refer to a procedure by its absolute address we refer to the procedure by its index in a global proc array so essentially but by moving the procedure around right by moving the procedure around uh you also do not invalidate any of the calls to that procedure right you also are not inv not invalidating anything so because of that it should be relatively easy to just like go ahead and remove um, the operations related to a certain uh, certain procedure, right, without invalidating much of the code. So, but how can we do that? We have a global OP array, and how can you just remove uh, the chunk of the elements from that array? So, I would I was thinking about to create the second global array and just iterate through the main array and just copy instruction only the instructions of the used procedures, but. I don't know, like I didn't want to do that. And I think we don't want, uh, we don't need to do that because there is a very interesting property of unused procedures that we can kind of exploit without allocating the second array. So uh, let me actually show you. So essentially we have something like this and here we have the procedures, right? In the global thing here. So here are the procedures. Uh, here are the procedures. Mm -hmm. So maybe I actually want to have more, uh, just to demonstrate this thing a bit better, uh, right, just to demonstrate this thing a bit better. And, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so and then through dead code elimination we detected that we don't need this procedure and this procedure, right? So what do we do? Uh, right, so we start iterating through the main array and uh, we actually start iterating through the uh, used procedures and basically start copying these their, uh, their instructions uh, at the end. As soon as we reach this thing, what we have to do, we just have to copy, uh, we just have to copy its instructions to like unused procedures. And since since we're copying backwards, we're not invalidating anything that is of interest. And this thing kind of invalidates this thing, which allows us to copy even more like to the end, right? So by just basically going uh, through used procedures top down and copying their instructions up, we're not invalidating anything of importance. You see what I mean? Uh, so I think this is what we can do, right? So there is like this property that we can easily exploit um, without allocating the second array or without doing anything special about, uh, you know, um, about the stuff. <clears throat> can you just not ignore the ops in the... Well, the position of the operation in an array it's, is its address. It is its address. Mm -mm. Just like substring removal. Yeah, it, it is basically a substring removal. Basically. Um, so, yeah, so the position of the operation actually has a meaning and it's the address of that procedure. So, to change the addresses of the procedure, we need to like sort of copy them up. Um, do you mean the procs are the same length? I don't think they have to be the same length. They don't have to be the same length, actually. Um, I think 
different lengths still do not invalidate anything. I cannot prove that mathematically, but I kind of feel like it. Our function calls call or jump their calls. Uh, they save the return address on the return stack. Mm -mm. Mm. And what do you mean by call? Do, are you talking about specific target or are you talking about intermediate representation? When I say operations, I mean operation of our intermediate representation. Our intermediate representation is not x86-64 instructions. They're not. It's our own thing that we control. And then uh, after that, we generate x86-64 assembly out of the, our, uh, our intermediate representation. So, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, and we are performing the dead code elimination on the level of intermediate representation, not on the level of assembly or anything like that. Mm -mm. Why copy? Don't print. I already explained that. Okay. Uh, just new people come in asking the same question. Uh, so maybe we're going to make a small break. I think we should make a small break because I want to make a cup of tea. All right, let's make a small break because I've been programming for like one and a half of an hour. And after the break, we're going to try to actually eliminate the procedures. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and see if we can gain anything from this stupid optimization because I didn't think so. Um, all right, so DCE, how are we going to approach this entire stuff? Um, let me see, DCE, right, so we visited everything and now we are just saying, okay, unused proc is that. So then I just get the proc, um, here we go, and I just print it. So maybe this is where uh, I'm going to start basically removing the procedures, right? I'm looking for used procs instead, right? I'm looking for used procs instead. And maybe I'm going to keep track of the... Um, new ops count, right? So there is an ops count which keeps track of how many ops we have, right? Uh, and we may introduce a new one, which is like a new ops count, which we're gonna like assign to ops after we folded everything, so to speak. Uh, right, so this is gonna be integer. And this is a local memory. Do I wanna go with the local memory right now? Probably not, I don't wanna do that. Uh, okay, so I can actually use let's in here. Uh, let's use let's. So this one is going to be essentially i, and before i, I'm going to put the new ops count, right? So this is the i, and because of that, this is not going to break, right? So this is not going to break. So here I take the dupe, and in here, what I do is I just do ops, uh, actually new ops, right? New ops count, right? So this is a new ops count. Um... All right, and hmm. so if I'm going to have like a nested loop, it will still be more convenient to have this as a memory. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do that then. Um, sure. Okay. Um, memory, uh, new ops count, and this is going to be size of integer right and i'm gonna say it set that to zero new uh ops count and i'm gonna just save it like that there we go um and in here we found a used procedure right we found a used procedure so i'm gonna do proc uh proc address pointer plus so this is where we start right and again this might bite us in the ass when you know uh when we introduce early return early return so this is going to be the second to do and i'm going to try to you know make it less as biteable uh off screen already right so i'll see how i can just sort of fix that um because it's definitely fixable it's just like you know uh, we need to have a, like a proper size of the procedure um <clears throat> so in the procedure we start copying the uh, prepare procedure, the preamble, all of the instructions, including op return, right? Including op return, and that's what we have to do in here. Um, okay, I'm just like thinking what's gonna be more convenient in this particular case. So maybe I think it is, is gonna be more convenient to do the loop in here, right? So uh, here I'm gonna have ops, right? So here is the ops. 
Uh, here we're gonna have ops and what do I want from specifically ops what do I want from specifically ops I think I want to just copy ops uh, into the new address but I need to copy it by the new ops count so this is gonna be something like uh, ops um, new ops count new ops count so this is a new ops count uh, multiply it by the size of the op, right? And then essentially I've set like this. So maybe instead of new ops, we could have kept track of the pointer. Of the pointer. That would be actually a bit better, I think. So something like ops top. Ops top, which is the pointer. And this is initially not null, but it points at the beginning of the ops array, right? So this is the ops stop, go stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so this is ops stop, and uh, this is the ops stop. Uh, ops stop. Uh huh. Kalinka, exactly. So this is the OP, and essentially what I want to achieve in here, when I'm copying the operation there, right, I'm basically doing mem copy. Uh, how do you do mem copy? Let's actually find out. Uh, std ports, uh, mem cpy, right, I have to provide the size of OP, then the source I'm copying from the current OP into the op top, uh, mem cpy. And that also should give me the uh, the size of the destination. So since op top is that, I actually have to uh, read it as a pointer. Right, I have to read it as a pointer. Okay. So I copied op into there. Then what I have to do, I need to take op top and increment it by the size of the uh, of this procedure to, to the next stop, essentially. And that is going to be basically it. Right, that is basically it. And after that, I need to determine what is the procedure, right? If the current uh, type of the, not procedure, but operation, if the current type of the operation is equal to OP return, we should stop the entire thing, right? While it's not equal, and then I also push the OP back, but uh, I'm incrementing. Uh -huh, so this one, and I also have to increment this thing by uh, by the size of the OP, so it's going to be points. Huh? There we go. So this is how we essentially copy in this entire thing, I think. Um, I think, I think, I think. And at the end, at the end, uh, what we're going to have? We're going to have OP top that points at the um, new end of the ops, right? So and what we can do afterwards? What we can do afterwards? We can take the ops top. Uh, was it was it op stop? Yeah, it was op stop. I mean, the compiler is going to tell me uh, op stop and subtract the uh, the ops from it. Right, actually, pointer difference. Right, because both of them are pointers, and this one is also a pointer. Right, we take the pointer difference, and that will give me the div distance between them in bytes, which I'll have to divide by the size of the op to get the new amount of elements. And I'm going to save that amount of elements into the ops count. Right. Uh, there we go. So I guess that's how we perform the dead code elimination. Hopefully. We'll see. So I'm going to compile the compiler with the bootstrap one, so it doesn't affect, uh, you know, the, the compiler too much. Right, so let's see if this entire thing even compiles. And, uh, okay, it's in. Um, right. Uh, what do we else have in here? Uh, so, oops, it has to be pointer. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh huh. Another one. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, what do you, what are you trying to tell me? I think it has to be this way. Yeah. Uh, and I'll probably have to drop this thing afterwards. So I push this thing, and then I have to drop it afterwards. Mm, there we go. So also, also, this is quite important. 
when we're starting to copy the used procedure, we have to update its start address. This is very freaking important. This is extremely important, in fact. We take its old address. This is its old address. But after we took its old address, we have to replace it with a new address. And the new address is at op stop. All right. And in fact, that address is like literally this thing. So we'll have to do this thing. This could be uh, slow, but that's fine. So op stop, ops uh, pointer diff. So this is going to be that. And uh, this is sort of like the new start, right? So this is the new start. And uh, I'll have to like, save it proc address pointer plus um, integer. Right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I didn't fuck up something in here. I think I fucked up something in here. Yeah, that's right. Because this is the index in the array. So after that, I'll have to read that index in the ops array, multiply it by the size of OP, and add ops to that. Uh, add ops to that. So that's what I have. And here, I'll have to modify the, the index address to, to the address. Okay, so let me try to compile into a thing. Unhandle data. So we have some sort of unhandle data, but I'm not sure. Um, mm -mm. Oh, by the way, I think I could increment uh, this thing somewhere here. All right. I can keep incrementing it. Okay, so that will simplify it. I think I'm getting lost a little bit, uh, but that's fine. I'm actually surprised this entire thing kind of worked. Right. It, it is kind of working. Okay, so that's impressive. Uh, so let me take a look at the port, and it is like saying some things. Let's take a look at this simple, um, simple example. So here is a very simple example, as you can see. And I'm going to just, uh, you know, try to compile it, like dump it. During the dump, we don't perform the DCE, though, right? We don't perform the DCE, so that could be a problem. All right. So here's that, and uh, yep, so nothing changed in here. And if I make something inlineable, nothing changes either. Well, something changes because we got things in line, but the procedure was not removed. Because uh, we don't perform DCE in the... Um, in the dumping, right? So let's find the dump. So this is where we dump. So we compile this thing, we type check the thing, and then we perform the DC, right? Uh, so let's see if it's gonna do anything. Um, all right. So, and then I try to dump this entire thing. I think it worked. So it doesn't have a P in line. That's what's weird, in my opinion. Uh, I didn't see OP in line, which is a bit worrying, I think. I don't remember mm -hmm. doing it this way. So if I remove uh, let me actually build the following chain. We're compiling the compiler, and then we're compiling, we're dumping the um, the simple example with that compiler, right? So there will be two steps in here, right? Then I can go here and just remove the DCE, right? And see what's gonna happen, right? Because there should be OP in lined. That's what I'm talking about. There should be OP in lined, but it kind of got swallowed, I suppose. Uh, and there also there is no call, call to the first proc. Well, I think there was. I think there was call to the first proc. Just a second. Uh, so let me see. OP call. Oh, there's no a call at all. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so we definitely fucked up. Uh, we definitely fucked up somewhere in DCE. Um, two AR instructions got eaten. Yeah. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay. So let me let me go through the logic one more time. So this is op stop. And we start at uh, at the beginning of ops, right? So then we are iterating through the procedures, right? Until we reach the end of the procedures. So we um, essentially take this entire thing, right? So we take this entire thing. Uh, we take the current procedure. Then we look whether this procedure is used. If the procedure is used, we up to inlining it, right? So then we take the starting address of the procedure right the starting address is the index in ops array right i take that index i'm just taking that index multiply by the size of op and then i offset ops by that and this is new ops in there this is absolutely new ops uh, from which i have to start copying into the op stop right so then i take the current op stop right the current op stop and I want to make it a new address. So the currently, if it's at zero, so it should be pointing at z right, right. So it should be pointing at zero, and that is fine. And I'm saving this entire thing back into this thing, like for the future reference and whatnot. Right. <sighs> for the future reference. Cool. So then I take OP address, which is this one, right? And then I copy it. So uh, maybe I fucked up something with mem copy. Let me double check. So I'm copying from ops, OP to ops stop, right? And ops stop is actually, right, a pointer. Right, so it should be fine. Then I'm just copying this entire thing. Interestingly, interestingly, Mem copy returns the thing that you're supposed to drop. Why didn't I drop that? And why the compiler didn't complain about that? That's the real question here. Uh -huh. Not enough arguments for pointer plus. Oh, I see. That explains it. Okay, so, okay. I shoot myself into foot, I think. All right, so I have to do something like... So this is going to be the next OP, right? This is going to be the next OP, uh, and this is going to be the Boolean. But in here, I might as well just like duplicate whatever we have in here and just increment it by that. Uh-huh. But it says that you don't have that. So in that case, I, I want to be able to peek into that. So I'm peeking into that and handle data on the stack. Um, all right. Mm. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. So, and what? where is that in handle data? Well, in that case, I do want to do that. It is complicated. Okay. All right. That looks a bit better. That looks a bit better, I think. All right. So we have that. We have that. Have that. Return. The next thing should be main. There we go. So it completely skipped it. Look at that. It completely skipped bar. It is not part of the uh, of the final thing in here. Uh, that is very cool. Yusu, 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 kawaii freaking this. And uh, it should kind of work, I think. If I try to now not dump it, but run it, is it going to print 69 for... It, it printed 69 for 20. Now I'm going to say that both of them are inlined. Both of them are inlined. And let's dump it and see how inlined they are. Right, so they both are inlined. So what's cool about inlined is that I don't have to really worry about inlined, I think, uh, because they're not going to be part of the final binary, but they are going to be part of the final um, assembly file. So that's kind of the problem in here. So if I take a look at the bootstrap and fuzz them, um, so op inlined, yeah. So how many inlined uh, lines do we have? Right, if I just go there, uh, right, and I tr try to grab op inlined from porth fuzzum. 
If we get rid of all of these operations in dead code elimination, how much we're gonna save? I think it's not that bad, if you think about it. I think it's not that bad. So it might be, might be useful. You know what I mean? So in a dead code, well, fuck. No, that's fine. We already inlined everything. So inlined is needed for the type checking, but we're doing DCE after we've done type checking. So it is not needed. Mm -mm. Mm, to save more space, only add the comments to the ASM if certain compile flags is enabled. Yeah, but I don't want to compromise on readability of ASM. I also really like that whatever we put in here is also semi-readable by a human. I kind of like that. I don't want this bootstrap, thinky, uh, bootstrap thing to be a complete blob. You, you see what I mean? I don't want it to be a complete blob, right? But at the same time, I don't want it to take too much uh, space. It's sort of like a conflicting goals, but that's the difficult part of developing this project that nobody usually wants to, you know, take on, right? I usually don't like to compromise on like difficulties, uh, difficulty of the things, um, right? Two spaces between four spaces might actually help a lot. That's a good idea, actually. You, you, you guys probably need good ideas. Right, so we may start actually like having less. What about the tabs? Holy fucking shit! We found a perfect argument in the tabs versus spaces uh, argument. Yeah. Holy shit, like the, the, the moment when it actually starts to matter. Holy fuck. Ah, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Whoa. Okay, so uh, let, let me actually think. Uh, I want to test that without any DCE, so I need to kind of save the the DCE thing. <laughs> uh, oh shit! All right, that's actually funny. So if, if it's gonna like reduce this, it may actually reduce the size dramatically. Holy fuck! Uh, okay, so DCE. Um, all right, I'm gonna commit everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Initial implementation of DCE, right? So this is going to be that, and uh, I'm going to go back to to master, right? I'm going to go back to master, and the port dot port. Uh, I'm going to try to find uh, everything, All right? Let's try to query replace uh, this one two three four, All right? With this bat tab, All right? How many of such things we can find? I'm not really sure. Uh, right, so this has to be like this. Okay, that kind of didn't work. Ah, shit, fuck, damn. Shit, fuck, damn. Okay, so can we have like a um, dot in here that is not um, space? Anything that is not space. Can we? All right. Uh, okay, so that could be Tov. All right. So that's one of the things I want to have. That's for sure. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. I think I did a oopsie doopsie and a little bit of a fucky walking. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, just a second. Um, query replace regular expression, and we're gonna kind of capture this thing, right? And we're gonna replace it with that. Uh huh. Yeah, there we go. I, I was streaming for too long. I'm sorry. I'm starting to actually having like a brain fart. Uh, a little bit of a brain fart right now. Brain farting out loud. Should be some sort of an emote, like laughing out loud, but brain farting out loud. Uh huh. Tabs versus spaces, baby. Getting there. Hmm. I'm doing that manually, so I just like I can catch the moment when I'm doing something, you know, weird. 
don't want to just blindly replace everything because it never ends well. Uh, you want to usually have like a little bit of a control over that anyway. Um, mm, that's a lot of intrinsic, so I should probably cut them off. <laughs> mm. Or maybe I should like make it a customizable thing, right? Uh, right, basically you can decide what's going to be the um, the padding, so to speak. Okay, I think I think we're done in here. All right. So now uh, I can try to compile the compiler, right? So I'm going to use Bootstrap compiler. Uh huh. Port the port. There we go. And fuck. <gasps> I just realized that our language does not support slash t. I completely forgot about that. Fuck. Okay. Uh, that's embarrassing. Anyway. Um, fuck. Can I just, like, I don't know, uh, stash everything in here? Um, and, uh, yeah. So I stashed all of these changes. Hopefully I'll be able to retrofit them back. Uh, okay. So here is the place. Here is the magical place that I made a video on. And uh, we're going to just add another thing. Might as well just copy paste this into stuff. Uh, so this one is going to be T, and if I go into the ASCII, uh, slash T, horizontal tab is 9. Tab 9. Wait... Is that the... Is that the idea behind the name of this editor? Does anyone know? So, because the 9 is ASCII code for tab. I never thought about that. Holy shit. That's a genius marketing, is it? So, yeah, the ASCII code of tab is 9. Did you guys know that? And the reason why they did that is that every time somebody figures that out, for example, on a the stream, they would unconsciously promote their autocomplete tool. That's a genius marketing right there. If they didn't do that, I would never even think about that. I would never open their website. And now I accidentally promote their shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> so that's how marketing works, by the way. That's why people try to come up with it, like these catchy names or like tricky names that yeah, reminds people of the product. So that's how it works, actually. Uh, okay, so this one has to be nine. Mm -mm. It's also played on T9. I don't know what is a T9. Oh, it's a for texting. God damn. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Got played like a field. You got them right. Okay. So uh, let's do the following thing. Uh, right. So we have a compiler that supports the tabs, hopefully. And then I'm going to actually add the following thing. Uh, right, so I have this stash in here, and I'm going to pop that stash. Right, and I can't do that because I have some local changes. God damn. Uh, all right, but I can just remove this thing and then push it back. Right, and then I can go back in here, revert the entire thing. And just push it in here. So now, if I do the port, uh, compile port the port, right? It will work. And let's take a look at the size of the final asm. Uh, oh shit! It didn't really work because I had to maybe recompile it twice. Okay, so we saved three hundred kilobytes. I think. I think that's what we did. We saved three hundred kilobytes. So yeah, cool. So how much can we save? Um, if we, for instance, um, actually don't do that. Like what if we don't indent it at all? How about that? So what if we don't indent it? Hmm. Uh, 
Okay, it's three megabytes. Actually, we kind of saved like a half of a megabyte or something, uh, which is great, I think. Which is actually pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, another one hundred k. Yeah, another one hundred k. So maybe it was worth it. So yeah. So does it actually affect the readability? It doesn't affect the readability that much, honestly. Doesn't affect the readability that much. So maybe. Maybe it doesn't matter. Also, we can get rid of the underscores between STR. <laughs> and we can save another kilobyte, by the way, because we have thousands of the strings. Have you thought about that? Um, just a second. Uh, if I do query replace uh, STR underscore with just STR, uh, right? And I can just recompile itself several times. And then, uh, well, it didn't, like, it's not that visible, but that, that's actually a pretty interesting idea. Anyway. Remove a new string. Th that's also a good idea. We also may try to remove unused memories, but global memories don't affect anything, so. Anyway, so all of that was just like, you know, to estimate how much we're going to save. I'm not going to like include that yet because I'm working on DC. Uh, right, so let me try to do that stuff. Okay. So let's go back to DC. DC you should save a little bit more, hopefully. Um, so, and we already, already established, right? So that DC kind of uh, reduces the stuff. Um, so I'm going to compile, actually dump the simple... Uh, port, right? So this is the simple port, and uh, there we go. So we have only this stuff. Uh -huh. It's kind of cool that the locations show uh, the original locations, right? But the the, uh, the instructions are actually located within the main, right? So they show the like origin of where the instruction was introduced, but there's no these things in here. And let me double check that the entire thing at least runs. Right, so it prints 69 for 20. Okay, so nothing is really damaged in here, which is super nice. So now we are ready to recompile the compiler with itself. Right, can we recompile the compiler with itself? Okay, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna do that the second time. So is the new compiler capable of recompiling itself? So this is the compiler that has uh, some dead code illuminated. And the question is how much we saved. Uh, we saved only two, um, okay, two kilobytes. <laughs> so we didn't save that much, but uh, that was interesting. So another thing, uh, right, as part of the dead code elimination, we could get rid of the inline things, right? So let's take a look at the inline things. Uh, DCE, right, so DCE. Uh, 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 uh. So... Right, so here is the OP, and essentially, uh, this is how we include this thing. So we just copy there, we increment it. But if OP, OP um, type, pointer plus, um, and we read that, and is it equal to inlined? If it is not equal to inlined, uh, we include it. If it is inlined, we never include it. How about that? So something like that, because after we perform the type checking, we don't need inline anymore because we know that everything perfectly type checked, right? So we can also try to remove a lot of different things. In fact, we can try to remove casts because again, we don't need any of that shit after we performed the, um, the type checking, right? And it's quite important. DC has to be performed before, uh, after the type checking uh, note must be performed uh, for after the type checking checking uh, because it removes it removes a lot of important for type checking stuff right and that goes into a very interesting direction right so that goes into a very interesting direction that I would like to explore explore uh, a little bit better Okay, so here's the type. So I think I'm going to do the following thing. Let op op type pointer plus int. Uh, it's not like that. What, if, what the fuck am I doing? So this is the type. All right. Ooh. And in here, might as well. 
just reuse this type like that? Huh. We were getting somewhere. Okay. Uh huh. Type OP. Um. Wait, is casting in an intrinsic? God damn, I think casting is intrinsic. So intrin intrinsic cast. Yeah. God damn. But I guess it's worth doing that anyway. So we can do operand uh, and just read that. Operand or oh shit. Mm -hmm. Type is intrinsic. Uh huh. Equal to intrinsic. Uh -huh. And the operand intrinsic operand intrinsic cast. Uh, so what kind of casts do we have? We have cast int cast pointer. So we have these things. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So equal to cast. Equal to boolean. Right. Lore. Uh, equal to pointer, like any cast actually, uh, pointer or equal to address, right? Or equal to address, any of these things. And we sort of combine these two things with land, uh, right? And these two conditions with lore. See? You see what I'm doing? So it's actually relatively easy to build a very complex conditions in a concatenative language, right? So this is the first thing. It's not aligned and uh, it's intrinsic and any of those things, but not, yeah, something like that. That's actually very cool. Uh, and then you lower these two, the two conditions together. Um, yeah, you can even do it like that, I suppose. Maybe. Does, does that make any sense? That's actually very dank, not gonna lie. Inlined uh, and then or that or that. Not inlined and not this thing plus any of these things. All right, so this is rather dank and let me think if it's gonna if it's gonna actually do anything. Okay, so let me take a look at the uh, simple thing, right? So does that break it? Does that break it? And also let's take a look at the dump. Uh, okay, cool. That is very, very cool. And now um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just like take the compiler and recompile it with itself. All right, I'm going to try to recompile it again. I'm going to try to recompile it again. Okay, so does that improve the size? Uh, it kind of didn't. But let me take a look. Uh, OP in. I still haven't lined. What the fuck? Uh, I think I fucked up somewhere in in the conditions. So let's actually start very simple. Uh, right. Let's start with just this. Right. Type not inlined. Um, mm -hmm. And that didn't really improve much, right? Um, I think I'm getting tired, so that's basically what's going on. I'm running out of... Okay, so... Yeah, anyway, so I suppose... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do that a little bit later. So for now, um, what we have... Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to just like leave this stuff as it is. Right. Uh, right, and let's just recompile the, the thing. Right. And then I'm gonna try to do compile with the port. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, and then if I take a look at the the final compiler, right, so it still have not line, but uh, it probably uh, yeah, it, it definitely removed some of the um, some of the things. Mm-hmm. All right, so yeah, that's basically how I approach the dead code elimination, I suppose. I think it was interesting, right? So we had to like traverse the call graph. I'm going to polish this thing up off screen, right? 
So I'm going to apply this idea of um, indenting with tabs and also removing some unnecessary after type checking instructions. I think this is a very cool idea. Uh, and maybe that will reduce the size of the executable a little bit. And after that, we'll see. Right, again, so I just want to reduce it so it's a little bit more comfortable to put this thing in the, in the repo. Right. So, and that is it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Uh, have a good one and I see you all next time. Thank you so much for all of the subscriptions. I really, really appreciate them. And uh, yesu, yesu, yesu. See you next time. Love you. Mwah.